Thank you. Hello, everyone. I know it's late in the day, so hopefully we can get through the next hour or so. Okay, so today I'm really just going to share a story about Albury City Council and about um, the landfill, which is one of my passions, I suppose I'd have to say that, and tell you a little bit about um, what's been happening over the last 10 years, uh, where we are now and what are some of the projects that we'll be doing in the future. Um, and everything that we've been doing um, at the landfill has actually been about protecting the asset. So it's pretty key that um, with our facility, it's a large facility, it's a large regional landfill. It's based in southern New South Wales in Albury and we're probably um, are quite unique with our council is where we service an area of about 180,000 population and we have three councils that are based in Victoria and three councils that are based in New South Wales that actually use the landfill. Um, we do accept municipal and commercial waste as well. Uh, the landfill itself, when I started 10 years ago, um, we only found out that it was you know, 16 years of life left to go. So we really needed to make sure that it is going to be here for the long term. There was very little recovery occurring at that time. And um, you know, there was a bit of steel recycling and green waste recycling, but they pretty much were the only items that were being recovered at the time. So since I started, it's been, um, I suppose, been driven by making sure there's education in place and improved uh, infrastructure and making sure that we've always got some future projects on the go as well. I like spending money, actually. Don't I, Mark? <laughs> okay, um, so the two key elements to do with all these changes that we've made over that time to make sure that, that facility is here for the long term is set some, set some key goals, basically. Um, and, one of, and they have been around education and making sure that we have infrastructure to support the changes that we're making. Um, Probably with this one, some of the more recent projects that we've got is um, putting in a push pit and a waybridge system, and I'll talk about those in a bit more detail later. And the picture is actually of our recycling um, centre, which is a drive-through area for our residents. Uh, we also undertake some processing in this area, and we've got a reuse shop as well, which is called the Upcycle Shop. All right, um, for us to implement any infrastructure, obviously it needs education and you, you also need a bit of an idea about what your key goals are and where you're heading. Um, so back 10 years ago, we set the aim of actually halving our waste to landfill by 50%. And even to this day, uh, although we've started working on a strategy, we have not got a strategy for our council in place and we've be, still moved ahead with implementing infrastructure, education, and developing the landfill. So that strategy has actually come retrospective of any work that we've been doing at the site. And right now, we've actually achieved a 48% um, recovery in municipal through infrastructure improvements and education. Talking about our education, it's a fantastic program. It's called Half Waste. I'm sure some of you have heard that before. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. We now have two education officers um, that are funded through Half Waste. Um, to actually fund the campaign, we, and that's a unique item as well, we've actually placed a $2.50 levy on every tonne of waste that comes to landfill. That in essence gives us $380,000 a year to spend on education. Um, which is fantastic because that money is hard to find for education and that's something that council have been able to secure uh, year on year out um, yeah through the through a waste levy and based on the tons that come into the landfill each year we work on a half waste plan and the councils all agree to it so with the six councils that bring their waste to the landfill they all agree on the plan uh, we do cover a lot within that yearly plan to spend that money uh, we do focus on organics, recycling and waste education. Uh, look, that also includes funding for tours at the sites, particularly the landfill as the main location in our region for waste management. Uh, we have sessions at schools. We do a lot of social media, TV. Um, you know, we've rolled out programs such as polystyrene in some of our councils as well to make sure things are being collected. Um, yeah, so it's quite a range of projects that are included within our education program. 
Now, this is just giving you a bit of a snapshot about some of the behaviour change that we've been covering. Uh, we do do a lot of TV, we've done billboards, uh, we've got a very comprehensive website development page that we've got going. Um, in 2015, we introduced FOGO, and so therefore we've rolled out over the last few years quite a comprehensive FOGO campaign around the introduction of that service. A lot on social media, um, out, you know, it's a very comprehensive program once again. We do, with all of our audits that are done biannually, make sure that anything that's falling away or needs improvement actually goes back into our hard waste plan and, and then um, you know, we make sure we have a focus on that in the coming year within our budget as well. And I have just Celebrating sort of with family and friends is great, but it can get a bit hectic. Especially at clean up time. With a few tips, we can help keep things in the right bins and keep on track to halving our waste. These paper plates and these napkins can both go in the green littered bin. So can these wooden skewers and the leftovers. Pop those bottles and plastic cups straight in the yellow littered bin. Just remember, no plastic bags. See, if everyone chips in, it's easy to do good. Half waste. Yeah, it's just giving you a snapshot about what our adverts are like. We've actually gone with all local champions and people just within our community as our talent. Um, I think that resonates um, very well for our regional area for us. All right, so one of the other programs that we have in place is the Red Pair Cafe. This also is funded under the Half Waste Program for Education. This is basically just a little pop-up shop that pops up every month. Um, and I will go on to show um, a few more figures with that one, but they've just become a finalist in the Environment Awards, which is a bit exciting. This is purely volunteer-based and a community-based program, and Halfways actually fund, just help with the social media side of promoting it, and also fund the actual um, the, the office space that this is actually ran out of. So this is a total success story. I know there are not many of these within Australia, um, so we're very proud to um, have one of these in the Albury-Wodonga area. Uh, the next one there, we've also out at the landfill um, aligned ourselves with AWARE programs, a, a not-for-profit and they're part of the NDIS program. Um, in December 2007, we actually partnered with AWARE under a service agreement arrangement to run our upcycle or our second-hand use shop out at our landfill facility. And we'll show you a little bit of a video on that too coming up. Just some of the, um, I suppose, in relation to the upcycle shop, they actually currently employ eight staff, which are all people that are either long-term unemployed or with disabilities. Um, at any time of the, uh, the year, it does actually grow up to about 14 staff, so depending on what's happening at the time. Um, we see this as a, a fantastic win for our community. The community just love this. They love the shop and they love the idea that you've actually got a not-for-profit um, working there and those people are, are running it. And look, the staff that are there are actually greeting the customers, helping unload cars, helping load cars. They're actually making furniture. Um, you know, they're fantastic and, and really easy to work with and, and quite involved um, with the program. They're just about to um, develop a community garden at the upcycle shop, so we'll see that coming up into the very near future. Um, council also requires that the upcycle shop and aware programs do have a communications plan. So each year we make sure that they've actually got certain Mother's Day events happening and they've got mosaic workshops and they've got lots of different activities happening throughout the year so that we can see that there's a fair bit of um, you know, input from the community to be part of some of those programs. And here's actually another video on a little bit about the upcycle shop. Apparently I was told it might take 20 seconds to kick in though, so just have to bear with me. Thank you. Push back, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 
we've got a, an area in our drive-through recycling centre that um, allows the customers to drop off these household items that then we bring into the aware facility and they get the opportunity to be on sold to somebody else. This Okay, wait. Wait. So, how much? No, 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 that's the big thing. How much in the end? Yes. Eight bucks. Yes. Thank that's you. Good call. Thank you very much. So you're talking about all of the indoor furniture that you have in your home, so whether it be beds, um, lounges, um, tables, those sorts of things. For the outside, if you've got an old mower or a blower back or, you know, some of those sporting goods that you don't need anymore, all those sorts of things can find their way in here and, and people find those things, um, you know, extremely valuable to, to reuse again or even use them as part of a project that they'd like to have at home and upcycle them, which is a great idea. Some of the other benefits is that council get the opportunity to work with Trish from Aware Programs and um, you know it's a very collaborative arrangement and there really are a lot of benefits from that. Uh, from, the, from our supportive employees point of view I think it's great for them because they get to um, learn new skills. They also love what they do, they love it's meaningful employment for them and they also um, help with the environment which they all think is wonderful. Well, they get to see a lot of stuff that comes in, which they get quite excited about. Um, they also get to um, build furniture. So we actually out here make pallet furniture as well. But they also get to upcycle furniture as well. And we also run mosaic classes, so they get to interact with people there and help them do things like that as well. We are reducing our impact on our landfill and reducing volume to landfill therefore um, have, allowing our landfill space to be here for the long term. Uh, we have a program called Halve Waste and the idea around that is to have a target to halve our waste going to landfill and we're very close to that target and this is just one of those initiatives that assists with that. Oh, it's a win-win for everybody so, for, and for everyone and it's great for the environment as well. Okay, so that's been... Oh won't stop. No, that's right. So that's been a very successful program and although we, we do keep an idea about um, how much landfill um, material is actually taken out of landfill through that process, it's probably not the main aim of the whole thing. It's really getting back to the community and um, giving those people some employment opportunities. Okay. All right, so this is the wonderful landfill that I just love so much. Um, so this facility is about six kilometres out of town and is on the west side of Albury, um, but basically now it has a very much a residential encroaching and surrounding the area, so that's not great for us because we do have westerly winds come over the ridge line, go down through the landfill and go down through the valley to where all these residents are now living. So that's something that's a bit of a concern, an ongoing concern. Um, our facility now has solar, as you can see there, so we also have a gas methane system in place. We're upgrading all of our leachate dams and sending that all off to sewer, which is all underway at the moment. We do pre-process organic material on site before it goes to a composting plant. We've got the large recycling facility there now, uh, which was implemented in 2016. We have a protressable and an inert landfill on this site as well. We've just um, redone all our depot area there and introduced a new wash bay and service area, which is just completed last week. And there is a push pit and a three-way bridge system. Um, so there's a bit going on here on the 120 hectares that we have. I'm sure I'm gonna run out of room building things, but there's still a few other projects we've got in the wings to do as well. Okay, so just to really explain our three-way bridge system, which is more around the innovation component of this presentation, this is purely for residents. It was introduced in 2018. Uh, we've set up a system whereby when you first come into the landfill, you get weighed, you go and take all your recycling off, and then you are re-weighed, uh, then you drop off any general waste, and then you are re-weighed on the way out. And you actually pay um, between that second and third way. So that's how we've actually, we can collect fantastic data that way and also show you the results um, from that initiative as well. The lay of the land has not actually been our friend, but we've been able to work around it as best we can.
will not make me jump. Oh. Okay. And I have another video. said this presentation crashed the whole system, so I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. Yeah. All right, I might move on from that one. Hopefully it'll move. Okay. So we'll just look at the results from actually um, having this Weybridge, this three Weybridge system. Uh, as you can see here, you can see in 2018 and 2019, um, when we were trying to recycle material, we actually recycled about 2,000 before the three-way bridge system came in. When the um, system was all implemented last year, uh, that actually rose to 7,000 tonnes were able to be recycled mm -hmm. due to the way bridge system being introduced. And that's just showing you an idea of some of the products and just some of the volume there. But that will also depend on what's happening in town and what projects are occurring but you will see a significant jump with garden organics and a few other items there. Okay, so one of the things we've just recently constructed is what we call the push pit as well. So once we set up the way bridges, you then drive into a push pit to dispose of your general solid waste. This was a $2 million project. Um, along with the introduction of the push pit, we did see uh, set up a new fee structure so that everyone then paid um, pro rata of a tonne. So our fee at the moment is $153 and you'll pay around $76 if you've got 500 kilos of that. That's actually been the game changer along with the Weybridge and making all your recycling free or, or minimal fees. Um, we've actually been able to see the results through that fee structure itself. And this will just show you those results again. Um, when you compare 2018 and 2019, um, the volumes to landfill have obviously reduced quite significantly and our recycling has increased um, yeah, quite significantly as well. All right, so this really is just telling you that we are tracking in the right direction. Um, from the time that we started back in 2009, 2010, we were taking, you know, that 100, 180,000 plus tonnes. Uh, we have actually been able to reduce waste going to landfill and we've been able to actually increase our recycling rates there. But you can see, it's a bit hard to see because the colour hasn't come up very well. But the two columns, um, yeah, the 2010 smaller column was what we used to recycle and the 2019 right column is what we're recycling now. And we've also seen a decline going to landfill over that time. And this is due to education um, and infrastructure and also we've seen a lot of industry move to Aubrey as well as a result of what we're doing in these areas. And a bit of a big float. No. Okay, I might just, he told me not to keep pressing it, so I won't. All right, all right. So the next slide actually is a little bit about customer feedback, um, and it does actually talk about some of the positive customer feedback that we've received. But I, uh, you know, although it says that it's a great concept and it's been easy to work with and, and those sorts of things, I can say that we do get negative as well. Um, not everyone has been able to adjust to the change. Um, later on in the presentation, it actually shows that we are now um, pretty much a renewable hub in Albury. Uh, we've introduced the gas methane system. Uh, we've also just set up 4,000 panels of solar on the landfill area and would welcome anyone to come and have a look at that as well. And we've introduced an EV charger there for anyone who happens to have an electric vehicle and comes through. And that's actually been set up at the landfill. So that will be for council and public use. Um, at the moment, the, the solar panels haven't been commissioned, but they are planned to be commissioned around June this year. 
couple of the other projects that we've got coming up um, include a construction demolition MRF. We were able to get $2 million from the Waste Less Recycle More initiative and council have contributed $2 million to that. So that looks, at be looks like being constructed by the end of 2020 and that will cater for about 35,000 tonnes of C&D material. So that's an exciting project coming up. And two others that I'll just mention briefly is an education centre will start um, this spring to be constructed and that's a half a million dollar project. And the leachate to sewer project has commenced now and we finished by the end of this year. And that again is $2 million um, that we're spending on that project. A lot of these have all been funded by council. Um, after that, I don't think I've got room to build anything else on the site. So I'll need to go and buy some land to see where else we can move to. So that's me, thank you.